If you ask most people their favourite Simpsons episode, they'll probably struggle to choose. The fact that The Simpsons was able to have such a long run of so many consistently great episodes is possibly unparalleled, and don't discount the post-classic seasons. There were a good few seasons after the golden era where the show was still good, maybe not as good as it once was, but still pretty great. I know some people whose favourite episodes are post-classic. My dad's favourite episode is from season 10, because he really likes this joke. Oh, he's sarcasm to well, that's a really useful invention. And my good friend Dylan's favourite episode is from season 12 because he really likes this joke. Yeah, that's right. Lieutenant L.T. Smash. I know it's a weird joke to really like, but you know what Dylan's like. It's not uncommon on YouTube to see clips from the post-classic era with comments below talking about it as being from the good old days when The Simpsons was still good. Because it was still good. Contrary to what some people would have you believe, The Principal and the Pauper was not the day The Simpsons died. I mean, The Principal and the Pauper is definitely a funny episode. Because we couldn't find Grandpa to sit for them. Why is Grandpa here? Because Jasper didn't want to come by himself. Obviously, I get that it ruins the canon and is a bit gimmicky to say the least. Even still, it's not as if the show became bad after that. My sister's favourite episode aired after this, in the very same season. No, in my opinion, the show didn't become an overall bad show until a long while after season 9. Indeed, coincidentally, the show didn't become bad until after the very season when the worst episode of all time was aired. I guess I should reveal that episode now before people start losing their patience. You don't want to sit through a whole introduction only for me to reveal that the worst episode of all time that nobody talks about is in fact an episode everybody talks about. The title of this video is in fact not clickbait. I've never heard anybody mention this as one of the worst episodes of all time, but in my view it is the single worst and that episode is the Season 16 episode, Mobile Homer. Oh, really quickly while I've got you, if you like this video, please subscribe, as I'm trying to grow this channel, thanks. Most people don't even know what this episode is when I tell them it's my least favourite of all time. They say, oh, you mean that episode where Homer buys an RV and they go on vacation and get lost in the woods? No, that's the Season 1 episode, The Cool of the Simpsons. Season 1 was when the show was still finding its feet, some people argue season 1 doesn't count as classic Simpsons because the show hadn't hit its peak yet, but Cool of the Simpsons is definitely still a fun episode. Mobile Homer is not this episode, and it is most certainly not a fun episode. But I guess you might be thinking, how can this be the worst episode of all time? And if it is the worst episode, then why exactly has nobody talked about it? How exactly has it slipped under the radar for so long? Well, one reason is that the badness of the episode isn't in your face, it's insipid, it's insidious. And that is what makes it so offensive to me. At least the other hated episodes with their over-the-top gimmicks and gratuitous celebrity worship are conspicuously tacky. But I guess if I'm going to argue this episode is bad, I need to establish my criteria for what makes an episode bad. You might say, well, The Simpsons is a comedy show, Obviously, it's the comedy. If an episode makes you laugh more, it's good. If you laugh less, it's bad. However, I'd argue that while comedy is important to The Simpsons, there's a lot more to it than that. I mean, think about it. If we just said that the deciding factor is whether an episode makes you laugh, then the worst episode would end up being a tie between a whole load of random episodes from the HD era. There have been plenty of modern Simpsons episodes that haven't made me laugh once, but are any of those really the worst episode ever? The thing about comedy is that there's a flaw. There's a point at which an episode becomes entirely unfunny, and at that point it can't really be any less funny that it can make something the worst episode. There are all sorts of different levels of being funny, but if something isn't funny, then it's just not funny. Now there is of course such a thing as being actively unfunny, when something is lacking in comedy in a way that is palpable, almost painful. I think we've all probably experienced a moment where something has been so unfunny that it's actively uncomfortable to watch. And certainly, yes, there are moments of The Simpsons which are embarrassingly unfunny. There are moments in lots of comedies that are embarrassingly unfunny. Obviously, I'm not talking about intentionally cringy comedy, like The Office where it's supposed to be cringe. I'm talking about when the show is trying to be funny, but because it's not funny at all, the failed attempt makes you cringe. A lot of the painfully unfunny jokes in The Simpsons are the ones that go on too long. Two examples that stand out to me are the joke about sleeping pills where Homer says the words mood swings in all sorts of different ways. Swings! Mood swings, mood swings. Mood swings! Or the episode where Marge says what and no. <gasps> no! 
What? Multiple times to Tabitha Vix. Both those episodes are actually pretty funny, but I have a distinct memory of watching them with other people and sinking into my seat out of embarrassment because they were just repeating this joke and nobody was laughing. I mean, I watched the Tabitha Vix episode with my parents, and it's not a good sign when I'm watching an episode like this. You ain't being unrealistic. And the most uncomfortable I felt while watching it was when a joke wasn't very funny. One of my more controversial opinions is that I don't really love the season 5 episode Cape Fear because it features one of these jokes where Sideshow Bob steps on rakes for ages. I watched this with a group of people and nobody laughed at this joke. It was a very uncomfortable experience. But the thing is, I still consider Cape Fear to be a really good episode, even though it contains a joke I consider to be painfully unfunny. So clearly, comedy isn't the main variable for an episode's quality. If an episode doesn't have that many jokes, then it's mostly just neutral, and if it has actively bad jokes, it can still be a good overall episode. Now the next obvious answer might be to say, well, The Simpsons is a piece of media, and like all media, it has a story. Sure, it's a status quo show, but each episode still has a plot, a plot that needs to be quite tightly written if it's going to fit in just 20 minutes. An example of a well-written plot would be something like Lemon of Troy. Patrick Willems has a good video on this where he explains how efficiently the episode is written in terms of setting different elements up and paying them off. And I can understand somebody saying that a well-constructed plot might make an episode their favourite. For the record, I can also understand somebody saying that an episode being really funny would make it their favourite. But again, I don't know if the inverse makes much sense. I don't think it makes sense to say that a poorly written plot is enough to make an episode bad. The Simpsons still is, at the end of the day, not a drama or a fantasy. It's a comedy. Indeed, it's a pretty absurdist comedy. So unsurprisingly, a lot of the time, you are going to get episodes that aren't necessarily masterclasses in storytelling. More significantly though, you're going to get episodes that are so off the wall that to even assess the quality of their storytelling is sort of ridiculous. Can you assess the quality of the storytelling in the episode where Homer calls into NASA to complain that their space launches are boring? So he ends up being recruited by NASA to go into space because NASA are worried that their TV views are too low? You could, but if you do that, you're sort of missing the point. As the aforementioned Patrick Willems might say, You're watching Simpsons. It's wrong. No, I'll save the nitpicking of the plot for my reviews of fantasy action adventure franchises. If Star Wars has a bad plot, then that seriously matters because Star Wars is about the plot. It's about the story. It's about making the world building believable. It's about creating a situation where there are emotional stakes because the characters behave rationally and their actions are properly motivated. This is a film about space wizards intended for children. No, Patrick, not here. Related to plot is the idea that an episode is bad in how it impacts the series as a whole. The obvious example of this is the aforementioned Principal and the Pauper, but even in this case, the overall show is quite resilient to these changes. At the end of the day, The Simpsons still tends to go back to the status quo. Like, technically speaking, Snowball 2 dies in season 15, and every subsequent appearance is a replacement cat that was just renamed Snowball 2. Also, technically the original Fat Tony is dead, and all new Fat Tony appearances are actually his cousin Fit Tony, who overate and then became fat. The show loves these moments where technically they change something, but then they just brush it under the rug. But let's not ignore the fact that the entire idea of Simpsons continuity is a bit silly when you consider the timeline situation. I don't know if anyone's noticed, but the Simpsons kids have been 8 and 10 for a while now. They've even celebrated a few birthdays, and more than a few Christmases, refusing to accept the whole Armin Tamzarian thing as a one-off reveal that didn't really affect the wider plot, is just ignoring that the continuity of the show is an unapologetic mess. What really matters is whether something within the context of the episode is bad, and the main example of this would be when you mess with the characterization in a way that doesn't work, even within the context of the episode, especially if you fundamentally contradict their ethics. The the problem is if you take a character who is beloved and make them an actively bad person, this is just unpleasant to watch. One reason why a lot of people consider My Sister My Sitter to be one of the worst episodes of the classic era is because Bart is such a massive jerk throughout the whole thing. I, for my part, object to the way in Lisa's Pony, Homer just buys his daughter's affection and he never really changes that attitude. Down to the last minute of the episode, he still believes that money is the only way he can make his daughter love him. Gee, Lisa, 
Grown-ups have a thing called money. Ethically, I just don't like that. Some people also dislike the season 1 episode, Homer's Night Out, because they think that Marge overreacts and Homer is presented as an evil guy for something that was ultimately pretty harmless fun. So again, the moral dimension to the characters is what people object to, the character ethics. But these are still episodes from the golden age of The Simpsons, so they're not too bad. It isn't until later on we start getting seriously objectionable episodes, and the prime offender in this category is Codependence Day, which is rightly remembered very negatively as the episode where Homer frames Marge for a DUI. So here's the thing, I don't care if an episode isn't that funny, I don't care if the episode has a silly, nonsensical plot, I don't even care if the episode messes around with Simpsons continuity and fundamentally alters the wider plot of the show. None of that really matters to me, but when you take these characters that people love and you make them do evil things, that's an issue. That's a serious issue. Homer's morality is important to him as a character. There are many episodes that make a point of stressing certain lines that these characters just won't cross. Admittedly, they never said explicitly that he wouldn't frame Marge for a DUI before, but I think that's the kind of thing that shouldn't need to be said. An episode about characters behaving in a way that is totally contrary to their established feelings and ethics is a seriously bad episode. For me, Codependence Day is an obvious example of where a character behaves so immorally that this alone is enough to make the episode fundamentally bad, so logically, Codependence Day should surely be considered the worst episode of all time, right? I mean, that would make sense. So in order to show that Mobile Homer is in fact the worst episode of all time, I'm going to compare the way it deals with character ethics to the way Codependence Day does, and show that the ethics in Mobile Homer are worse. You might be thinking, hold on a minute, Seriously? You're telling me that the episode where Homer buys an RV has a worse depiction of Homer than the episode he frames Marge for a DUI? Well, let's just look at Homer's actions in both episodes and compare them. See, there are three things to consider when talking about the morality of an episode. Firstly, the reason a character performs an action. Secondly, the potential consequences of that action. And thirdly, the punishment they face for that action. This third one is really important. There are episodes where characters behave awfully, but if they end up being punished in some way by the narrative of the episode, then this means that the overall ethics of the episode are maintained, at least. So with that said, we have Codependence Day, considered by many to be the worst Simpsons episode of all time, and Mobile Homer, which usually doesn't make anybody's list of the worst episodes. Let's compare them. So why does Homer frame Marge for a DUI? Pure self-preservation. It's not malicious at all. He doesn't do it because he dislikes her, or wants her to feel worse about herself, he does it because if he gets caught drunk driving, then he'll lose his license, whereas for Marge, there won't really be any legal consequences. There's an episode from season 14 where Homer loses his license and Marge has to take over all the driving. The pressure she feels here gets so extreme that she starts to subconsciously try to murder him. That's also a pretty bad episode in terms of morality, but that establishes that there is some precedent for believing that Homer losing his license would actually be a worse outcome here. So Homer maybe chose the lesser evil. Now Homer's reasoning is conditioned upon him driving drunk in the first place, and obviously you could point out that's a seriously bad thing to do. It's pretty unforgivable, and in some sense any time you do it, you're as good as murdering somebody, because that's the risk you take when you drive drunk. That's the reality of the situation. However, in The Simpsons, for better or worse, drunk driving is not treated as a serious issue. It's a bit like strangling Bart, in that it's something you have to accept as a horrible thing to do, but that the show just says isn't a big deal. Every single time a character drives drunk, it's consistently presented as a joke, they're not going to do an episode where Homer drives drunk, kills somebody, and has to live with the crippling guilt of knowing his decision caused somebody to lose their life. I just don't think that would be in the general spirit of the show. You have to accept that driving drunk is just something that happens in The Simpsons, so we have to take it for granted that Homer has already driven drunk. That's a given before we begin to consider how he behaves next. 
He gets in an accident, and then with a tiny amount of time to think, he panics and puts Marge in the driver's seat, with the logic that it won't have any effect on her, but for him it would mean losing his license. Now for Mobile Homer, we probably need to do a bit of a recap about the actual episode. Basically, Marge gets worried about their financial situation and starts saving up large amounts of money. She saves up this nest egg through a lot of effort, getting the family to cut costs. Homer, on the other hand, shows absolutely no concern for this at all. When I was thinking back on this episode, I gave Homer the benefit of the doubt and thought, well, maybe Marge's saving money does go a bit too far, so Homer is kind of justified. But no, not really. I mean, arguably Marge's money-saving efforts are a bit excessive, but Homer isn't justified, because Homer doesn't take any effort to save money at all. While Marge is making an effort to save money, he is wasting it. It's not like Marge is the bad guy who's ruining everybody's lives trying to save money and Homer is the reasonable one. No, Homer is actually less reasonable in the way he just throws money away. But despite Homer not being at all in the right here, he really objects to how Marge is behaving. So Homer decides to spend the money Marge has saved up on an RV. Is this because he desperately wants an RV? Not really, no. Instead, his main motivation is, and I'm not kidding here, spite. He does it just to upset her, just to make her sad, just as an act of domination to undermine her efforts. You thought you could save a bit of money? Well, screw you. I'm going to buy something completely unnecessary just to reduce all your hard work to nothing. What a nice guy. There's also some degree of misogyny involved in it too. Yeah, show that skirt who's boss. So that's another level of being a jerk. He didn't reason that this is a necessary thing to do in order to avoid a worse situation for both of them, which is sort of what he did in Codependence Day. Nope, he did it purely because he wanted to make things worse for Marge. This is, to my knowledge, the only time in the series where Homer has done something just to upset Marge with no other motivation. So what about the impact of these actions? Well, as already said, Homer's initial reason for switching places with Marge in Codependence Day is precisely that he doesn't think it will have an effect on her. He knows that he'll lose his license, so he switches places with Marge because she won't. So on a surface level, his initial motivation is the fact that the action won't have any foreseeable negative impact. Now as it happens, Marge does in fact get negatively affected. She comes to be judged by a lot of the people in the town, which is definitely a double standard, but it isn't Homer's fault that double standard exists. But moreover, she comes to feel incredibly guilty about her actions and ends up seeking professional help with her alcohol problem. Now, this is messed up. Marge is basically gaslit by Homer into believing that she has a serious problem based on false pretenses. This episode is one of the worst episodes of all time for this reason. However, if we're asking what is the worst thing that Homer has ever done, we need to make sure we're establishing just how bad this action actually is. And what matters there is how predictable a consequence is for an action. This is why we distinguish between murder and manslaughter. The consequence is the same, but in one situation, the person didn't intend to cause that consequence. Now, not only did Homer not intend for Marge to react this way, but it's not obvious he could have even foreseen Marge reacting this way, considering that he most definitely wouldn't react that way at all. I'm not saying that Homer's ignorance excuses him here, but it does mean that it's not as if it was communicated beforehand that these were the potential consequences, and he acted with full knowledge this is what he was risking. No, it's pretty obvious that he didn't do this action knowing that it would make Marge feel this way, hence why he clearly feels incredibly guilty when Marge does react this way. Now what were the consequences of Homer's actions in Mobile Homer? Well, on the surface he just wasted a lot of money, which is pretty bad, but based on that alone, Codependence Day would surely be worse. Well, again, we need to consider the foreseeable consequences. See, I mentioned that Marge was trying to save money, but I didn't mention why. Marge is rightly worried that if Homer ever dies, then because they have lots of debt and he is the sole earner for the house, the entire family would be broke. This is the concern that Marge repeats to Homer over and over as she tries to get him to apply for life insurance, which he ultimately doesn't qualify for. The episode literally gives us a dramatization of what it would look like if Homer does die. Marge watches a TV show about it, and we see that the family becomes homeless and destitute. So Marge saves up the money so that if something does happen to Homer, his family will still be taken care of. This is the money that Homer knowingly spends. 
he spends the money that has the sole purpose of ensuring his family will be okay no matter what. I can't stress how evil this makes Homer as somebody who should be providing for his family. And again, Homer 100% knew that this was what the money was for. Marge made this very clear to Homer that this is what the money was for, to take care of his family and make sure that his wife and kids would be alright if he wasn't able to work for whatever reason. Now you might say, well sure, but the nature of The Simpsons is that we know Homer isn't actually going to die, so we shouldn't factor the possibility that Homer might die into our consideration of potential consequences. But no, they make a massive point of stressing in the episode that he could die. Just because he doesn't, doesn't change the fact that he's constantly cheating death. The reason why I say drunk driving isn't a big deal in the Simpsons universe is because they're constantly making jokes about it, and it's never treated as a serious concern. But Homer dying is treated as a serious concern, and the only reason he doesn't die is because of the nature of it being a status quo show. But if Homer was constantly putting people's lives in danger, we wouldn't say that's just fine because it's an animated sitcom so people are very unlikely to actually die. No, danger to life should be taken seriously. So when the show tells us that Homer is at risk of dying and shows us what it would look like for Homer's family if he did die, and it is repeatedly reinforced to Homer that the purpose of this money is to take care of his wife and kids if anything ever happens to him, and he still chooses to spend it, I'm sorry but I'm not letting him off just because he isn't actually going to die. He's showing the consequences that he is comfortable with his wife and kids incurring. Sure, if we just consider the actual effect, then wasting a load of money isn't as bad as your wife feeling intense guilt about something she didn't do, but when we consider the possible outcomes of his actions, which is what really matters if we're assessing Homer's morality, then leaving your wife and kids to be destitute is clearly worse. I mean, if you think only the actual outcome is worth considering, then you'd have to be arguing that if somehow due to some bizarre contrivance Marge ends up actually benefiting from being tricked into thinking she drove drunk, then this would make Homer's actions moral. And obviously that's not a reasonable conclusion. What matters is the likely outcome. The third thing we need to consider is how the episode punishes the character for their actions. Homer is constantly being a jerk in The Simpsons, but the episodes where this happens are often well regarded because Homer learns a lesson. Homer is a massive jerk in Dead Putting Society, but he also gets totally dunked on for it. He's really awful to Lisa in Lisa's Substitute, but he's forced to atone for it. And here's the thing, a lot of people complain that Homer doesn't really get a proper punishment in Codependence Day. They have to wrap things up pretty quickly, so Marge basically just realises that she loved spending time with him, so she's willing to forgive him for framing her for a DUI. Hard to think Karma has really been satisfied there. However, the episode definitely does make it clear that Homer is the bad guy in all this. Homer literally admits this himself immediately. Oh, this is a new low for me. There is never any ambiguity within the episode about the fact that what Homer's doing is really bad. There's a whole scene dedicated to this where Mo says that as a bartender who's heard all the terrible things that anybody has ever done, this is the worst thing he's ever heard anybody do to anybody. He actually goes so far as to physically hurt Homer as punishment. Is this enough? Not really but it's something. Now what about the episode where Homer decides to jeopardize the well-being of his entire family in a serious way just out of spite for his wife? How does the episode punish him for that? Well, it doesn't. Marge gets angry at him, but Homer is completely blasé about the whole thing. Indeed, there's no point where he actually gets punished by the story at all. On the contrary, Marge ends up more punished as the situation develops. Homer is even able to win over the kids by promising stuff for them. This is after Marge promises to let the kids be verbally disrespectful to her. I'll let you sass me! Marge is reduced to begging for her kids' attention in an episode where she didn't do anything wrong, and they still end up going over to Homer. And then when Homer and Marge really start fighting, you know what started all this trouble? This motorhome. No, not even slightly. This isn't the RV's fault. The RV didn't show no respect for the well-being of his wife and kids. The RV didn't show contempt for his wife by buying something excessive just despite her efforts to take care of the family. No, that was all Homer. Homer's 100% in the wrong for all of this. And yet somehow the episode ends with Marge basically coming round to Homer's point of view. It's only money, and it did make a cool splash. Yes, in the episode where Homer is the most immoral person he's ever been in the entire series, the episode ends with Marge learning a lesson. 
There are no words to describe how awful that is. There is literally nothing in this episode that amounts to Homer learning a lesson or in any way having to make up for what he's done. So the morality of this episode and its treatment of Homer's character is worse than Codependence Day on every point. Homer's reasons are worse in this episode, the foreseeable consequences of his actions are worse in this episode, and yet the episode does nothing to punish him for those actions. And yet this still isn't quite fully stating the case, because in Mobile Homer, Homer doesn't stop being a jerk. See, in Codependence Day, Homer is mostly a good guy. The episode is mostly about their mutual happiness together as they have fun hanging out, and the latter part is about Homer feeling incredibly guilty for betraying this relationship. There is just one moment in the middle where he does a cowardly action that hurts her. Homer does something bad, but he is not cruel to Marge at any point, because his motivation is not cruelty. In Mobile Homer, his motivation is cruelty, and unsurprisingly he's consistently cruel. He not only is completely unapologetic, which is bad enough, but he also invites loads of other RV owners to his garden, and he jeers at her when she says that she's trying to get to sleep and they're keeping her up too late. It's obviously only 20 minutes, so there's only so much time for him to be a jerk, but he is one at every available opportunity. He's just a real asshole for the whole episode. Before we conclude, I do just want to make a few more points about how this episode is bad, and I'll continue to use Codependence Day as a point of reference where a Appropriate, because obviously there's more to an episode than just its character ethics. Firstly, even an otherwise bad episode can be saved by its B-plot, and Codependence Day definitely has a pretty good B-plot. It's about Lisa and Bart struggling to get in contact with a parody of George Lucas to express their dissatisfaction with the prequel trilogy. I mostly like this because it's fun to see what they do with the Star Wars parody, and it's always nice when Bart and Lisa team up. The way they frame the criticism of the prequel trilogy is a bit weird though. They lean almost entirely into the idea that the main problem is that the prequels had too much politics and not enough action. They're just getting the plot out of the way so it won't slow down the pew pew. If anything, the prequels had too much much action. Like, that Anakin and Obi-Wan fight goes on forever, way longer than any of the fights in the original trilogy. The action in the prequels is also way more over the top and elaborate than in the originals. The politics in the prequels is actually pretty interesting and really isn't omnipresent. In The Simpsons they imply that the entire film was just one big long senate hearing. Honestly, criticising the prequels for the presence of politics being too boring and getting in the way of the action is both completely inaccurate and an incredibly pleb tier objection even if it was true. Sorry, I just can't go a whole video about talking about Star Wars. Oh, and it's weird that they call Star Wars Cosmic Wars, even though there's plenty of canonical evidence in The Simpsons that Star Wars exists, but whatever. But despite these issues, the B-plot is a very welcome distraction from a main plot where Homer frames Marge for a DUI, obviously. And meanwhile, in Homer Alone, there is no B-plot. The entire plot is literally about Homer being a jerk and getting no comeuppance. I would rather watch the most bad faith criticism of the prequels in the world than this, but instead, this is what we're locked into. This episode does however have a distinct opening act. I mean, it's not that distinct. There are a lot of Simpsons episodes where the opening act is so distinct from the main plot as to be self-parody. We went through all that just to wind up with a tennis court. I bet you didn't see that coming. In this case, the opening act is designed to set up the fact that Homer is accident prone, which is obviously relevant to him not having life insurance. The beginning is kind of funny. You can find the clip on YouTube with quite a few views and positive reception. Out of context, this scene is fine. It's not 10 out of 10 comedy, but it's good enough that I wouldn't complain about it in any other episode. Definitely doesn't save the episode overall though, and it's long forgotten by the time we get into the really bad stuff. This is though why I made a point of stressing that humor isn't really the main thing determining the quality of a Simpsons episode. Almost every notoriously bad Simpsons episode has some funny jokes in it. But an episode can still be my least favourite and still get a laugh out of me. I guess in a way that's quite a big positive to say about The Simpsons, that this is my least favourite episode and it still makes me laugh. I like this joke in particular. What? I seem to recall you asked me to get this fat! And also this one. I plan to go on motorhome makeover and trick this thing out like a palace. All I need is for someone to start a show called Motorhome Makeover. There are a few other jokes in the episode that I can imagine people pointing out as highlights. But one real highlight needs to be pointed out. See, right at the beginning I pointed out that some people might confuse this with The Cool of the Simpsons where Homer also buys a motorhome. Well, this episode actually features the return of Bob's RV Roundup. Thank you, God. <laughs> 
16 years later and he's still there, doing his thing. I respect that hustle. Anyway, that's why for me this is the worst episode. It just ruins Homer so much and makes him more unlikable than he's been in any other episode. If you took all his jerk moments from every other episode and put them together, he still wouldn't be as much of a jerk as he is here and the episode lets him get away with it. But I've never seen anybody call out this episode, so I figured I needed to be the change I want to see in the world. If you respect that, then please do give me a like and comment to let me know what you think, that really helps, and of course subscribe, because while I'm not going to talk about The Simpsons every week, I do enjoy talking about and evaluating media, so it would be nice if you're around to watch my next video. Thanks.